morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having MDEC to share with you on what we are doing in Malaysia with regards to FinTech, especially how it can be used to help those who are in needs during this difficult time. My topic today is about building an inclusive FinTech ecosystem with focus of Malaysia. Before we go into the specific on what we are doing to help the people and the businesses in needs, let me share with you Malaysia's digital landscape with focus on areas related to the financial services or digital fintech. We all know Malaysia has a population of about 32 million people. The majority of them are already in the city, so urbanization is quite high. Malaysia has also very high internet penetration. Uh, the last report stated that Malaysia is about rank 11 in the world. So internet penetration is high in Malaysia. And uh, consumers in Malaysia also like to make payment. If they are doing uh, e-payment, they like to use mobile phone. So mobile payment transaction value is expected to reach quite high, about four, more than 4 billion ringgit. And um, you'll be surprised to see that we have many e-wallets license, five to the banks and non-banks 47. This is to be expected, even though the number seems a bit high, but I believe in time to come, it will be streamlined and consolidated in order to uh, provide value. But it's good to have more players at the early stage so that we can see and test what works and what doesn't work. Uh, we are also very advanced in terms of a P2P and equity crowdfunding. Later, I'll have a slide to, to give you more details. But today, we have 11 P2P license holder and 10 equity crowdfunding holder. And the latest addition is about digital asset exchange that was just uh, uh, awarded sometime this year. To, to develop FinTech, you cannot be just having one party doing it. So ever since we started embarking on developing Malaysia's fintech ecosystem, we have set out to work with everyone who can contribute, including the regulators as well as the industry, because these are two key uh, players uh, in, in, in this whole uh, fintech ecosystem. And uh, you can see on this chart, we have participation from associations, from government agencies, from corporate sector, and then uh, we have regulators, a central bank, security commission, and the financial institutions. These are some, some of these financial institutions are the established, the, 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 the corporate world and venture capitalists. Uh, we have SMEs taking part, individuals, talent, FinTech players, global advocates, accelerators, innovation lab. You see, it is very important if you do not have all this player come into place, then it's not complete. With all these uh, different organization, agencies, and individuals taking part, then we can uh, happily say that Malaysia's fintech ecosystem now is quite robust and it has a very vibrant uh, uh, vibe to it. I also like to share with you some of the notable uh, fintech companies in Malaysia. Uh, many of them are in the investment uh, and also payment space. Uh, South Space, for instance, uh, is, is a company we are, that we are very proud of. They just latest received a series B investment from Sumi Tomo Mitsui uh, company. And currently they are quite uh, active in Malaysia and Japan. I understand from the founder that they are also doing some work in, in Taiwan. So this is one of the good fintech company we can we can look at and they focus on payment with many IPs that registered by them. Now, many companies actually are in investment, like Hello Go, like Wahe, like uh, who else, uh, the Luno and, and, and many more. So these people are providing new and alternative investment opportunities to benefit people in the past may find it difficult for them to, to invest because we talk about investment, you always believe that you have to have a lot of money to invest. But here is to encourage people to look at investment when even it's small scale, because we believe that only when you start 
from somewhere, then you can continue to invest. Otherwise, money will go to waste. And you will notice that on this slide, I have fintech, I have Islamic fintech. Why we are highlighting Islamic fintech? Because many people will know that Malaysia has always been taking the lead in Islamic finance. And, and, and for instance, we are the world's largest super uh, issuer and, and, and so on and so forth. So we believe that to, to apply the digital aspect to the Islamic finance is going to provide more opportunities, also giving Malaysia a head start. Therefore, we are also doing a lot in encouraging Islamic fintech development in Malaysia. Here we are just highlighting a few, but you can see, look at the numbers. Fintech companies are close to 200. And of, of, of this, about uh, more than 30 are Islamic in fintech, and we are looking at more people coming to join us in this space. I promise you the, some details about equity crowdfunding. So Malaysia, some of you may, may, may know, we are the first in the region to, to promote and regulate the uh, equity crowdfunding. This is to protect both the investor as well as the operators. And uh, we have seen a good success. Well, I say that 2018 here pitched in at least a market with 75% market share, but uh, over the last two years, many more players are already uh, coming in and, and contributing to many successful campaigns. On this slide, uh, based on the latest information from Security Commission Malaysia, 119 successful campaigns had and raised 129 million uh, ringgit of, of funding to help the, the startups who are interested to, to uh, 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 go to market or develop something new. And also you will notice that 46% of them are below the age of 35. That means many more companies are actually uh, coming in to, uh, to develop their, 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 their solution. And latest information also say that about 200 thousand SME just recently registered to become an entrepreneur. It's also because I believe during the, the COVID-19 pandemic, many people may have lost their jobs and they want to try their, their fortune in, in starting up their own business. With equity crowdfunding, it allows uh, a lot of these uh, uh, companies to, 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 to come in and tap. And, and obviously, equity crowdfunding is not the only way to tap funding, P2P financing is another uh, um, alternative. We have regulated operators, the same thing, because uh, for Malaysia, we also want to make sure that when someone invests in providing financing, they are protected somewhat. This is not to, 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 in, to introduce a constraint and also a boundary, but it's all more about giving both investor and also the, the, the the borrower some kind of uh, protection. So the data compiled by FinTech News Malaysia in 2018 indicates that funding society leads the market with 51% market share. Those days, a lot of this financing are meant for invoice financing. But uh, during this time of a pandemic, I have noticed that uh, a lot more companies are coming in, tapping into P2P financing to help them with their operation uh, needs. So operating capi capital is also one of the uh, popular P2P financing uh, for these companies. A again, the 200,000 new SME I talk about, are actually leveraging this, uh, this platform to, to, to get some of the uh, uh, very uh, needed uh, capital to help them. We have uh, many successful campaigns, 13,000, uh, and then raised close to a, to a billion ringgit. And, and again, you can see that this is even higher than equity crowdfunding. 62% are below the age of 35. A lot more young people are coming in and start out their, their business. And, and this P2P financing really is helping uh, many more people to start their, their business because uh, it is easier for them to obtain the capital that's much needed. And, and this slide shows you some of the key regulators milestone. We, I, 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 I talk about digital asset exchange. So July this year, Security Commission Malaysia has uh, issued the guidelines uh, for crypto exchange, while 22 companies applied and 20 opted to assist. Luna was the first to, to uh, and, and, and Synergy was granted full operator. 
uh, uh, license, well, token, tokenized receive conditional approval. And in time to come, we will see that uh, this digital asset exchange is going to play their role in helping more people who are interested to, to, to trade. Uh, we, I think a lot of people also will be interested to understand what is Malaysia's uh, uh, stance on digital bank. Uh, March 2019, the, our central bank has announced that Malaysia will be issu issuing virtual banking license. And we find the Malaysia also um, finalized, updated the exposure draft on licensing framework for digital banks issued on March uh, 3rd, 2020. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, I believe that sometime next year, the, the announcement should be made to, 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 uh, to let everybody uh, know the, and those who are interested who has been successful uh, in, obtaining, in obtaining the license. There are many other things that, that, that our regulators uh, has, has uh, put in uh, uh, to the market to, to help to develop this um, fintech uh, in, in Malaysia. For instance, EKYC, the Open API, property crowdfunding, and many more. So if, you, if you're interested, I will encourage you to continue to follow some of the news uh, uh, announced by the regulators and also maybe from the from our FinTech Association in Malaysia. Now I'm coming to, to the organization that I represent and that Malaysia Digital Economic Corporation. If you recall a few slides ago, uh, I showed the, the, the ecosystem where you see the regulators, the policy makers, the industry players, and so on and so forth. And that show is very much about working with all of them. But before I go into that, uh, just to, to, to introduce, we, have, we are a company about 25 years old, and uh, our mandate is to develop, coordinate, and promote Malaysia's digital economy information and communication technology industry and the extensive use of ICT. In short, it's about uh, to, to, to build a digital economy towards the shared prosperity for all Malaysians by uh, uh, enabling a, a, a conducive uh, ecosystem. How we are doing this? We focus on three pillars or, or, or three, three uh, focus areas. Digitally skilled Malaysians is key. We need to ensure that we have the right people, right talent who are digitally skilled because in the di digital economy, you need to have people, both the supply side and demand side to know how to use digital skill effectively. So that's one focus. The other one is digitally powered business. Well, it's not enough that you have people who know digital skill. You need to use it, you need to embrace it. So for this one, we break into two parts. One is the user side of it, like the SMEs, the mid-tier company, the corporate, what they have to do is they need to use digital technology, digital solution. So if you want to go e-commerce, how to use data analytics, how to use AI, how to use IoT, that's very important. While you have user side, we have to also ensure that we have a vibrant uh, supply side. That's why Malaysia has a very healthy ICT or digital uh, industry. We have few thousand companies from both our local and around the world operating on Malaysia, providing such solution. Some of that, sometimes we call them technology solution provider, uh, sometimes we call them other names, but essentially you need to have the fiber industry and continue to drive digital investment. Be it the infrastructure, for instance, the data center, to have the right you know, broadband and so on and so forth. And also continue to drive investors coming into Malaysia. So these are the three focus areas for us. Essentially, this will lead to G GDP growth, knowledge transfer, job creation, and citizens' well-being. To have a very, uh, um, I would say, healthy uh, digital economy to drive the country forward. How do we drive fintech? And they drive fintech by promoting public-private partnership. As a country, Malaysia is fintech ready. We have quite high bank population, which is quite close to developed country. Like for instance, 95% of Malaysians have a deposit account, and then also very high online banking penetration. Malaysians have a very connected population. Um, more than 75% people have a smartphone, but if just normal phone itself, our penetration rate is 140%, so it's high. And, uh, 86% of Malaysians have an internet connection. I, I talked about it earlier. We are amongst the, 
the highest in the world, uh, ranked number 11. Now, so, so now have I, after I said that FinTech ready for Malaysia, so then we come and into uh, analyzing what are the different programs that we have put in place, working together hand in hand with the regulators, with industry. Uh, one of the initiatives is called eBurka. This is meant for digital financial services, B4PN, micro SME. It is even more important now when more businesses and more individuals are impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. I will have more detailed discussion about this later, but this one is just to tell you that this is one of the key focus for us. And that is working hand in hand with the, with the regulators and the industry to drive this. We have a FinTech hub in Malaysia, we call it Albert. It's powered by MDEC and it is an inclusive FinTech hub for Malaysia FinTech ecosystem. So anybody who are keen to understand a bit more about what is the FinTech uh, uh, scenario in, in, in Malaysia, they are welcome to visit us either virtually or in person to the Orbit. It's, it's uh, uh, situated in the center of KL and, and you can always go find us on, on the website as well. Um, under Orbit, we have a, a program called FinTech Booster. It is a FinTech capacity building program for startup and corporates uh, with MDEC and Central Bank of Malaysia. I'll have another slide after this to, to show you a bit more detail about it. But uh, it, it's a suffice to say that FinTech Booster is to help those people who have idea and especially the startups uh, or, or corporate we want to venture into fintech solution, they can come to the fintech booster program to learn a bit more. Uh, on top of that, of course, uh, we are also a, a regional test bed for inclusive fintech, uh, or you can say uh, include, uh, uh, fintech uh, financial inclusion. So for instance, uh, we have a regional cross collaboration with UNCDF uh, uh, and ISDB. And I'm also very proud to share that we have established a financial innovation lab uh, uh, we actually, when I, mean, I say we, actually it's more like UNCD have established this in 2018, hosted at Orbit together with and then uh, uh, our central bank. Because so we continue to support other uh, initiatives like uh, under APEC, where we are host country this year, we have something called APEC Gig Economy Challenge. We, we, we invite uh, companies from all the member economies, in this case 21 of them, to improve the financial health of gig workers. Gig workers, as we all know, the these are the freelancers and, 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 and then while well, freelancing is not new but in today's world there are more people are uh, joining this, uh, this uh, gig uh, workers platform and we want to make sure that they continue to be supported with the latest uh, solution technology and so on and so forth. Um, I talk about, I promise you on a FinTech booster. So, so it, it's very interesting why we have this. It's because um, it's an offshoot of the survey conducted by, by our central bank uh, from their sandbox program. As you know that we introduced sandbox like many other countries who are uh, uh, developing their FinTech uh, ecosystem. The sandbox is to help uh, people or the, the startups or those who have a new FinTech solution to try out the new idea. But I've realized that there are many pain points uh, that uh, these uh, companies are facing. Not necessarily it's a regulatory issue, sometimes it's just about not understanding what are these things are about. Therefore, we collaborate, and they collaborate with our central bank, develop FinTech Booster Program to provide capacity building resources for those who are interested. They can be local companies, can be foreign FinTech companies, doesn't matter. But if they are interested to come to Malaysia to test out, they can, they, 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 can, they can join this program. We have already launched our legal and compliance uh, uh, capacity building program. This pillar provides legal and regulatory support for companies to ensure that they adhere to the regulatory uh, gatekeeping, compliance, and risk management. More about helping them to understand what are the legal and compliance needs and help them to navigate. Because a lot of time it's not that they need to change, it's just that they do not know. So this is, uh, this is what we, we, we roll out. How we are doing it, we go through public workshops and one-to-one -one session. Anybody can sign up and, uh, for the public workshops. Those who want to go to one-on-one -on -one session, they can apply and then we will look at their needs and then 
uh, make a decision whether they are ready to go for the one-to-one -one session. And these are all provided free of charge. We will be launching the business model market access module and also the technology module next year, most likely second half of the year. So again, same thing. The, the business model pillar is to provide support for companies to enhance the business plan and to develop the, their MVP. Now, many of the time from, from the, from the uh, survey is about knowing how best to, to deliver, deliver the solution. And we want to use this uh, uh, business model pillar to help the company to navigate. And of course, technology is always key. That's why the technology pillar will also be introduced to help companies who are interested. You can always go to fintechbooster at mdec.com.my to understand how you can be part of it. And, and if, let's say you are a service provider or you are uh, other partners like big companies, like our, under our legal compliance, we have uh, Lisa Modi, Zai Ibrahim, and uh, uh, Richard Wee, PwC. These are the people who come in and provide this support. And who knows, right? You can also later engage them or be a partner to, to drive your solutions forward. Now, I will, I will spend a bit more time on digital adoption, especially on e because this is also uh, in line with the topic of the, of, of the day, how we can use FinTech uh, to, to promote a more inclusive uh, support, especially for people who are having difficulties or challenges during this difficult time. If you look at, uh, uh, I, I, I mentioned earlier that Malaysia has a very vibrant and also very uh, banked population. But at the same time, they are, we're still having some, some issue. I call it underserved. They are not unserved, but they are underserved. Because due to the, the, the no, uh, low financial knowledge on what is available and what is possible. And many of the people in this group, the B40 group, uh, they have no budget planning because it's like uh, they live uh, hand to mouth, day to day. So we want to make sure that there's better budget planning because only when the population are more aware of uh, financial uh, literacy, they have better budget planning, then you can ensure that they are their future is more sustainable. And if individual or small uh, micro SMEs are, are, are more stable, it will also contribute to a country's uh, stability. So this is really, really important. Uh, if you look at the type of uh, uh, companies who are providing financial services, we have these traditional institutional financial services, like the big banks. We also do have the non-bank institutions. And uh, like in Malaysia, we have something like Amana, Iktia, and, and Ankasa, and so on and so forth. And, and for this digital, uh, the e we actually work mostly with the fintech companies because this will allow a, a more flexible and, and faster uh, delivery of services because these people have less constraint when they want to embark on the uh, a new way of uh, doing business and supporting. So, so e we started with um, 11 fintech companies who are uh, providing something we call it the sleep our digital sleep strategy. Uh, sleep means savings, lending, investment, and payment. Why it is very important, I, I go back to the budget planning and financial knowledge. Because maybe people have a bank account, they do saving, but they do not know that they can do more with the saving. For instance, they can use it to invest, right? So, or if you're running a business, you may not know that you have a way to, to borrow money. So what other uh, better way for them to do that. These are all the things that we try to, uh, to bring it to the, to, the, to the group, to the community that we want to serve, especially those who are suffering from the, from the pandemic. We also have a key focus in Sharia products. Sharia products means uh, they are more, they are uh, compliant to the, uh, the, the fundamental of the Islamic finance. Because Malaysia, uh, we, we have a large Muslim population, so obviously this product is not meant just for Muslim alone. Uh, Non-Muslim also can, can take part. But for some of the Muslim population, they will have more comfort if they know that this is Sharia products. That's why uh, we, we, are, we are providing such a solution uh, through, through our Ibrakat program. And, and, and this, this program also aligned to the Malaysia's greater uh, economic goal.
So a bit more about eBurcat. Before we, we, we develop our platform, which I will share with you in the next uh, slide, I just want to, to, to share that we actually run a pilot. And this is very interesting because this pilot we run with a big telco, Asiata Digital. I think many of you may have heard of Asiata. And also with uh, Hakusa One Digital and Smart Belia. So, so this particular uh, pilot, uh, we have <clears throat> successfully provided 35,000 ringgit uh, loan uh, to, to the 23 companies. Obviously, we want to have more because uh, we have we have targeted a thousand members and only have 181 uh, apply and 23 uh, approved. But we have learned a, a great deal from here. For instance, we understand that the challenges faced by the the, the targeted uh, members, including communication barrier, readiness to digitalize, internet connectivity, and so on and so forth. So from this learning, we have then come up with a. a, a the solutions that after this slide, not this one. This is just uh, the three successful uh, uh, applicant, and they are interesting. You can see they are thirty five or below, and and this also uh, uh, put well with what I just say. Uh, many of these people now they are the youth, the young population. I think it positively. That means uh, more young people are starting to 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 plan for their own future and wanting to to take the challenge to, to start their business, which is, which is a good, good thing. So, so based on the learning from the pilot, this is what we, we have done. We, we, we work with uh, 11 FinTech partners through a public-private partnership. And, of course, and that work uh, with a, a, a more established company called uh, Silver Lake to, to provide and develop this platform uh, so that uh, this one-stop uh, center where the applicant can come in and also the, the solution provider can come in to provide their, 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 their service. It is a marketplace for easy access among underserved. And it's also in line with our financial inclusion strategy and shared prosperity vision 2030. How we are doing this is very simple, a 3A offering. Give an alternative uh, financing uh, support to the people who are are in need of these uh, financial services. It, we also make it very accessible because through a smartphone, you can have access and it's affordable, lower barrier to entry. Let's say you want to invest 100 ringgit, which is about $30, you can start doing your uh, investment. Or if you want to do lending, you can also come in and do that. So at, at the bottom are the 11 uh, fintech companies I've talked about. So, Investment like Hello Go, Luno, uh, MyTech are, are doing that. And, and, and also uh, insurance, uh, even though sleep doesn't seem to be uh, talking about insurance, but insurance is also very key. Through this uh, so in, uh, different uh, uh, new insure tech solution, people can actually buy uh, their the insurance policy uh, with a click of a, a mouse. They can buy a daily policy or per transaction policy and not having to be stuck with a big uh, policy that, that the traditional insurance company provides. So, so we are very, very excited about the potential of this. And microfinancing for people who require uh, capital uh, injection to, to, to have something to, to fund their invoice so they can come to these uh, solution providers and obtain the necessary microfinancing from them. So, so we are very excited about this. Uh, the assignment itself, of course, is, is not enough. So, so we want to invite the, the, the user, the, 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 the micro SMEs to come in and register with us through the eBird card to, to leverage and deploy financial health products. And, and, and for the tech startups or FinTech startups, do come in and join our FinTech Booster because you can, through the workshop, you can learn a lot more on, on the FinTech scenario in, in Malaysia and the different uh, policy and regulations that, that, that is important. And, and if, let's say, you are someone who is providing um, legal advice or you have good tech uh, platform, you can also contact us because we are looking for partners to help to be part of the FinTech Booster program from the supply side or from the enabler side. So these are all very important. 
and 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 please also log into our to our website or MDEX website to understand a bit more and get in touch with us because we will be happy to hear from you on on your suggestion. Before I end, because since I talk a lot about Ibraka, I have so very interesting uh, three minute video that I want to share with you on how we are using the Ibraka to benefit different type of uh, uh, businesses. So please enjoy the, the video. So with that, thank you very much for your time. And uh, the, the time to digitalize, the time to use the technology to, to benefit yourself, your business is now. So. Uh, don't hesitate, don't join us and, and adopt digital for the benefit. Thank you.